Have you ever done a group project where you had a group member that it's not just that they weren't helping you do the project, it's that they were actively trying to hurt you, like they were sabotaging you, just distracting you and preventing you from doing the work. Well, today, that's your TA, Serenity. She hates shear and moment diagrams. Maybe that's something you and her have in common. But even though you and me are just gonna be doing two sets of drawings, and these are the easiest type of shear and moment diagrams with just point forces and point moments, she's just gonna be down here being cute and trying to distract us. So focus, shear and moment diagrams. So I divide shear and moment diagrams into four categories of difficulty based on how complex the forces are. What we're doing today with point forces and point moments is gonna be the easiest category of shear and moment diagrams, which is not to say that they're easy. This is probably the most dreaded topic in statics. Of course, when you get to mechanics and materials, pretty much every topic there is dreaded. Beam deflections, beam design, combined loading, permanent set. There's so many hard topics, they all just kind of blend together. But no matter where your problem lies on this difficulty scale, you're gonna to follow the same three big steps every time. First, you're gonna draw a free body diagram and solve for your reaction forces. Second, you're gonna draw the shear and moment diagrams. And then third, you're gonna solve for the maximum value for V, the shear force, and maximum value for M, the bending moment. In statics, you're not gonna use those values V and M, but when you get to mechanics and materials, those values V and M will help determine whether your beam is actually going to break in transverse shear for V or due to normal tension and compression stress due to bending. First this problem will be this fixed joint beam that's subjected to a point force and a point moment. First step, free body diagram and use the equations of equilibrium to solve for the reaction forces. Sum of force in the y direction, you get a force of 500 pounds at the wall. Sum of moments about point A, I've got the reaction moment at the wall, 500 pounds times seven foot of leverage. And then the 2000 pounds is already a moment. You do not need to multiply that by 14 feet. That's a very common student mistake. And if you're worried you might make the mistake, then write out your units, write pound feet for the moment, and then pounds times feet for the force times distance, since every term that's added together has to have the same units. So I label the force and the moment back on my original drawing, and next step is gonna be draw the shear and moment diagrams. I start my drawing with a vertical line on the left-hand side of the beam, and then two horizontal lines that's gonna be the x-axis for shear and the other one for moment. And then every interesting point where something happens or something changes on the beam, I draw myself a dashed line down, and that's just gonna be used as a visual aid to try to line things up. So the first rule that you'll learn for drawing shear and moment diagrams is that a point force causes a point jump on your shear diagram. An upward pointing force moves up, downward pointing force moves down. So the first thing is to move straight upwards to 500 pounds based on the reaction force along the wall. Then during those first seven feet, there are no forces. So that means the internal stresses don't change. And so the shear diagram just goes straight horizontally because nothing's changing. But then at this point that I'll label point B, there's a downward pointing force of 500 pounds. So the shear diagram goes straight down by 500, which brings us back to zero. And now for the whole rest of the beam, there's no more forces so the shear diagram just goes straight right along zero all the way to the end of the beam. There's a moment that gets passed, but a moment is not a force, sort of. But the moment does not directly affect shear. That 2,000 pounds will have an impact on the moment diagram coming up next, but for the shear diagram, you just go right past it and ignore it. And that's it. If you did it correctly, you should start at zero and end at zero. Every shear diagram, every moment diagram, no matter how complicated the forcing functions involved are, will always start at zero and always end at zero. So if you ever don't end at zero, that's a clue that you made a mistake somewhere, maybe in your free body diagram and forces, or maybe in your drawing of the diagram. For a moment, there is a moment along the wall, negative 5,500, and so I do a point jump straight downwards to negative 5,500. Now it's really easy to forget which direction, clockwise or counterclockwise, is a positive moment. For me, the way I remember is by always drawing the arrow for my moment on the left-hand side side. And so if on the left hand side that arrow is pointing down, then that means my shear and moment diagram goes down. If my arrow on the left hand side of the circle is pointing up, then that means my shear and moment diagram will go up. But if you get this mixed up and you end up having your force go the wrong direction, you'll find that out later on. When you get to the right side of your diagram, you won't be at zero. And that will tell you that you chose the wrong direction. Just go back and do it positive or negative, whichever is the other one that you did, and you'll get to the right answer. To draw a moment diagram, I'm looking at the shear diagram for area, 
and I'm looking at the free body diagram for point moments. So I already drew the point moment on the wall. Now during this first seven feet, there's area under the curve. There's a big rectangle there. The value of the shear diagram is the slope of the moment diagram. That rectangle on V has a value of 500. That means the slope of the moment diagram is plus 500. So since it has a length of seven, 500 times seven is 3,500. That's how high up it goes from the starting value of negative 5,500. That gets us to a value of negative 2,000 on the moment diagram. And another way to think about that besides slope would be area. 500 times seven is the area of that rectangle, which is 3,500. And so the change in moment across that area is 3,500. So we go from negative 5,500 to negative 2,000. During the next seven feet, there, nothing happens. There's zero on the shear diagram and there's no point moments on the free body diagram. But when we get to point C, there's a point moment on the free body diagram. This is gonna cause a jump straight upwards because the way I drew my arrow, it's pointing upwards on the left-hand side. So my moment diagram will go straight upwards by 2000. That's gonna bring it back to zero. And then during the six feet at the end of the beam, no shear, no point moments of free body diagram, nothing. So the moment diagram just goes straight to the right along zero. So those last six feet on the beam are just kind of along for the ride. They're not actually doing anything. There's no forces over there at all. So there's no stress on that part of the beam whatsoever. So the maximum value for shear, 500 pounds. Maximum value for moment, 5,500 pound feet. And by maximum value, we just mean the maximum magnitude. So even though this is technically the minimum value, it's the point with the maximum magnitude for moment. That's what you're trying to find. Because a positive moment or a negative moment are both gonna be equally as strong at trying to break something due to bending. Halfway done, one problem to go, same point for, same point moment, but this time we have a pin and roller joint instead of a fixed joint. And for simplicity, I'm gonna ignore that little tiny section of the beam just to the left of the pin, because since there's no forces over there, there won't be any stress in that part of the beam anyway. First step of shear moment diagrams, draw a free body diagram and solve for the reaction forces. The X direction force is easy. There are no X direction forces in this problem. So FAX is gonna be zero. I'll do a sum of moments about the pin joint to find the force at B, which is the roller joint. And I get 1100 pounds. And a sum of forces in the Y direction gives me a value of negative 600 at A. So the pin joint is actually holding the left side of the beam downwards. It's not pushing up, it's holding it down. So now that I've transferred my reaction forces over to my original drawing, step one is complete. On to step two, draw the shear and moment diagrams. So I start by setting up my axes directly below my original drawing. And then I draw these light dashed lines below every feature, every reaction force, every force where a distributed load starts and ends, anything that changes on the drawing, Give yourself a dotted line there so that you can line everything up on the shear and moment diagrams. Shear and moment diagrams both always start and end at zero. So starting from zero, and then there is a point force at that pin pointing straight down 600. So my shear diagram goes down 600. There's no change to forces during the next five feet. So internal forces would be exactly the same. So my line's just horizontal, but that 2000 pound moment actually doesn't affect shear either. So even for the next five feet, so the whole first 10 feet, Shear diagram just goes horizontally straight across. It's unchanged since there's no new forces on the diagram. At point B, there's a point force at the roller joint that's positive 1100. So I have a point jump straight upwards of positive 1100 takes me to positive 500. The next eight feet are empty. There's no forces. So my line's just horizontally straight across unchanged. And then at the very right side of the beam, there's that 500 pound force pointing downwards that takes my shear diagram straight down 500 back to zero, which again is a good sign. You always wanna end at zero. And if you don't get to zero at the end, it means you made a mistake somewhere. All right, so looking at moment now, we're gonna start at zero and I'm looking for area on the shear diagram or point moments on the original drawing. There's no point moment at a pin joint. Pins don't resist rotation. So next thing I'm looking at is that 600 pound rectangle on the shear diagram. Its value is negative 600. So that means the slope of moment will be negative 600. Or since that area is below the X axis, that means moment curve will be decreasing. It has that 600 pound slope for a distance of five feet, which is gonna be 
3,000 pound feet. Or you could say the area of that rectangle is 3,000 pound feet. So the change in moment is 3,000 pound feet takes us down to negative 3,000. Then at point C, there's a point moment. And this moment is spinning clockwise, which has an upward pointing arrow on the left hand side, the way that I draw it, which is how I remember that my moment diagram should point upwards. So I draw a point jump straight up of 2000, which takes my moment curve to negative 1000. That second five foot section also has an area of 3000 and it's below the X axis. So that means the moment curve is going to drop by 3000 at this slope of 600 pounds per foot, which takes us from 1000 to negative 4000. And that 4000 should be a reassuring number because looking at this next rectangle that has a height of 500 and a length of eight, 500 times eight is 4000 and it's above the X axis, which is increasing moment. That's gonna take us back from negative 4000 plus 4000 back to zero on the right hand side of the moment diagram which is again a good sign you always want to end at zero now that the diagrams are completely drawn grab the maximum value for v as your maximum shear force and the maximum magnitude for m as your maximum moment so 600 pounds and 4,000 pound feet and if you're in mechanics materials the 600 pound value for v is what you'll plug into the transverse shear equation vq over it to find your maximum shear stress and this 4,000 pound feet is what you're gonna plug into the flexure formula, MC over I, in order to find your maximum normal stress due to bending. Here, Andy, look up at the camera. So hopefully your TA Serenity wasn't too distracting to you this whole time. Your TA Indy was actually just kind of sitting here quietly minding his own business. If you're ready to move on to more advanced shear and moment diagrams, I'll put some up on the screen and you can click to any of these videos next. And that'll take you to problems with rectangular distributed loads, triangle distributed loads, or distributed loads of functions. Thanks for watching and enjoy the rest of your day.